On this episode of In The Wheels, we are in the wheels with Lockie Brown. He is a New Zealander um, kind of star in the making, if you will, um, in the mountain bike eliminator scene. He won his very first World Cup race. He's the New Zealand champion and he's only 19. So, you know, he's got a huge future ahead of him. And in this, we preview the Worlds, which has actually just happened um, at time of recording. But we previewed it and we talked about his career so far and how he even got into cycling and just what it's like to come across from New Zealand. Um, And then obviously future plans. So sit back and listen in. Hello and thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, good. Um, so yeah, let let's start by asking, like, how did you get into cycling? Um, I understand you're quite young actually as well, which makes me feel a little sick because you're born in like after two thousand, which I I do not like. <laughs> yeah, so I um started racing uh, BMX from quite young. My um dad raced BMX as a kid and sort of. We sort of just followed on um, into that when I was about four or five. And I I raced BMX um, up until I was about 16 and then sort of just just wanted a bit of a change, something something a bit different. The BMX going to the same track all the time was getting a little bit repetitive for me. So I I always did a bit of mountain biking on the side, but just moved more so into that when when the BMX was sort of wasn't loving it as much as I used to. And then doing the mountain biking just gave me it was always different and super fun so that's sort of how I moved over to the mountain bike oh nice because are there like are there many opportunities because you're from North Island right in New Zealand so yeah you know I was trying to think earlier like who would you have looked up to and I can't even think because like Hayden Rolston was like he was quite good but he was on the road and not a mountain biker at all like yeah yeah yeah, it's um, yeah, it's yeah. We didn't didn't have a whole lot, but like always, always had Sam Gaze. Like he was sort of always mm. knew, knew who Sam Gaze was, and um, he was sort of probably the biggest one I looked up to, and still do to this day. Trying to trying to do my best to make something happen like him, because yeah, yeah, he sort of started off started off in the same way I have, just sort of getting himself over here and just seeing what he could do on the on the world stage. So yeah. Yeah, because how long are you in Europe for? Is it just like, have you got much um, more time left? Because I know you've spent a bit of time already. Yeah, um, yeah. So I've been here for about two and a half months, and I'm I'm actually heading home after Worlds. So Worlds will be my last race in Europe for this year, and then sort of just using this year as the the test year and the learning year to see see what how I compare to to the big names over here, and um, yeah, look to look to come back next year for hopefully a full season. Oh, nice. Because like, was there any, I guess, was there any fear when you did that? Because, like, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm imposing kind of personalities onto you. But to me, I'm like, I've got family from New Zealand. And I know this kind of New Zealand mindset is so like, oh, just give it a bash, see what happens. And kind of like it, it's almost fearless in some ways. Yeah, um, pretty pretty much. If I'm honest, like <laughs> for for me, it was like if if I want to be like trying to make something out of mountain biking, you kind of you want to race the best. So like mm. for me, it was just like get over here, just give it a crack, see how we go. Whatever happens, happens, sort of thing. Not really, not really any fear. Just sort of more so, just keen as to get over here and have a crack. Really. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, how did you even find out about mountain bike eliminator then? Because it's such, it is a niche sport within cycling. Um, you know, I've only been following it for the last two years. I uh, know it's got a, a deeper history than that, but it's still very emerging as a, as a yeah, discipline. Yeah, definitely. If, if I'm honest, I've actually only, it's like before, before I came over here, I'd only done two eliminated races, um, just national champs in 2022 and 2023. So uh, to be fair, I haven't, haven't known about it for um, very much longer than you had. And I know in Europe, it's been quite big for a while. Um, but yeah, before, before then, I sort of had no idea it was even a thing. So yeah, it's uh, been quite, quite a quick transition into it. But yeah, I'm loving it so far. Yeah, I mean, what a way to to start, and we will get to that. Like, because you won, 
you win the national champs, um, which I found out they certainly how the results were displayed on the website I used. It had XCE and XCM as a kind of joint event. Well, not a joint event, but like a championship weekend of yeah. Eliminator and Marathon, which is yeah, like, the, yeah. like going, oh, yeah, we're going to do a Grand Tour stage and then a Kieran on the track. Like, yeah, it's it's just... it's an interesting weekend. It's very hard to train for to try and be at your best for the the marathon race on the Sunday and race the Eliminator on the Friday night. It's it's a it's a tricky <laughs> one, but oh, it's it's probably like one of the um, best weekends for mountain bike in New Zealand. So everyone sort really? of gets around it, and uh, yeah, I think for a lot of people, it would be their favorite weekend of mountain biking. Yeah, because whereabouts was that? Because I'm I'm becoming more and more keen in in terms of um knowing about geography um yep. and in fact uh, when i went to oh that's scary when i went to new zealand you weren't even born so <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. we did like a three and a half week tour where we started in auckland yeah and then finished in christchurch and did oh, like yeah. all the places yeah, yeah. like in between and then a few bits more south in in the yeah. southern islands um yeah. so yeah like where was that taking place in yeah, was uh, it, it was easy for you in, to get to? Um, it was held in Rotorua. Um, it's sort of in the central central North Island, sort of where it's probably one of the biggest mountain bike destinations in New Zealand, other than probably Queenstown. But just in the um, Whakarewarewa Forest, they've got, it's pretty much like unlimited tracks, really. We're for like, especially for the um, the marathon race, we're pretty, pretty lucky. We like sort of don't touch the same tracks twice um, sort of thing and just have unlimited um so many good tracks that we can run the race on it's pretty it's pretty cool yeah that i i guess without being your birthplace is kind of helps um and being local for you yeah, um, yeah. so yeah like obviously you, you win the xc champs this year yeah. um so you've had to or you've been able to race in in the jersey and then you've done a bit of a world cup like was that I guess which came first? Did you win the champs and go, oh, I might as well do some World Cups? Or were you always planning to do the World Cups and you win the champs on the way to doing it, if that makes sense? Yeah, so I um I came third in 2022 and that sort of, so I was like, okay, I didn't, was sort of focused that year purely on the marathon um, race and sort of went all right on the, on the Friday night eliminator race. And then I was like, okay, I probably probably have something here and it was it's sort of like BMX so I kind of have a background and sort of um like almost it feels feels natural to me so after that I was kind of like okay this is this is quite cool um I'll go into next year with doing some more prep for the eliminator race and see how we go there and then sort of just go from there and after after winning nationals I was kind of kind of made me think yeah okay I I think I could probably have a have a shot at doing quite well overseas so sort of no better time to go over and have a crack now yeah i mean you started pretty well i mean <laughs> doing quite well like <laughs> so you went to palankaraya um the indonesia round um yeah. and you backed first it's like who's this guy like yeah yeah that's pretty much i couldn't have couldn't have planned it any better like i was i was i definitely had a bit of luck here and there but yeah, it was it was insane, like pretty pretty unbelievable. And so, still to this day, it sort of can't really believe that it actually happened. Yeah, because I mean, you put some amazing names behind you and former world champs. Because I'm I'm sure Tishwan was there, who's yeah, the yeah. current world champ, and he's won it like five or six times now. Yeah. Um, uh, and Simon Gegenheimer, his his teammate, who's who was the previous world champ before Tishwan. So it's like, yeah, like. They're not bad names to be, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you know who they were, like, going into it? Did you go, oh, oh, my God, I'm against, like, this guy and this guy? Or were you, like, completely naive and just like, nah, you know, it is who it is? Nah, I, I'd definitely done done some research and watched some previous races. Um, so I knew who they were, but I tried to just sort of do my own thing and sort of try and more so, like, Obviously, you know you're coming up. It's like, oh, looking, looking like next to you, who who you've got up next to you, and you're like, okay, this, uh, you know who that is. It could be could be quite hard here, but it's just trying to, for me anyway, trying to just 
focus on what I was doing and trying to just, yeah, do, do my own thing, just put my best foot forward and see how I go, really. Yeah, and did you let, like, when when you kind of got there and did the qualifying and were watching the other first round races, were you watching for who's taking what line around the course? Or were you just, again, were you like in your own mind and going, I'm going to race my own race. This is the quickest line for me rather than, you know, what might work for someone else that doesn't work for you? Yeah, yeah. For me, I pretty much just focus on what I was doing because yeah. I, I like to think that I ride things or some some things quite differently to others whereas like I might um yeah pretty much just find what works for me and pretty much stick with that because I think whatever I find is usually up there with the um the quickest lines or the quickest for me anyway so yeah I like to just stay stay with what I'm comfortable with and find my own lines and yeah like I said I usually tend to ride things quite differently to other people so yeah just sort of go with that Oh, nice. And then, um, like, are you, this is part that I haven't researched, so apologies on that, but, like, do you qualify better or do you race better, if that makes sense? Like, because certainly in the, like, in the women's field, like, the people who qualify the best tend to race the best anyway. But in the men's, it's so much more open. Like, someone can qualify 30 seconds and still get into the final. And it's just mad, like, just so close yeah. in terms of racing as well yeah and in, in the last um couple of world cups i've pretty much had a bit of a mixed bag um sort of been been spotted in all over the place but then when it comes to comes to the racing i i like to think i'll probably be better at the racing because i'm kind of able to make moves um once we get into the race i um definitely struggled to start in indonesia so I was uh, like sort of forced to fall back on that and make the moves after the start, which I think played played into my skill set and worked out quite well anyway. So yeah, I'd probably say more so the racing side of things rather than the, the time trial because the time trial is always hard racing by yourself just against the clock. You've got no one to, no one to chase or no one to um, stay away from sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. And so you followed your, your World Cup win with... Well, I think it's 25th in, I want to say Sakaria, Sakaria. Everyone says it differently, but yeah, um, yeah 25th there. And then 9th in Lerva, um, yeah. which is a great result. Um, so it, it tees you up nicely. It's a, a solid set of results, I'd say. How, yeah. how do you feel coming out of them? Um, I was a little bit disappointed with Turkey. Um, hmm. I was I was pretty tired um, coming into the race. Had a Had a long long travel over and I traveled late um so it probably wasn't ideal and then just sort of a couple of other things stacked on top of each other and I sort of knew I was a bit tired um going into the race but then I, I did qualify all right um I think I might have it was either seventh or eighth I think that I qualified so it was still good I was happy with that but then yeah sort of came to the race and I just didn't really have a lot to give which I was a little bit disappointed about obviously because I like to like to always be up there if I can be, but 25th isn't bad. But yeah, always striving, striving for more. And then Leuven was another another good step in the right direction. So hopefully that should should uh, um, keep on with the upwards trend heading into Worlds. Hopefully, yeah, definitely. Um, and are there any lessons that you've learned from this year? Because we will talk about Worlds in just a sec. Like, yeah, are there any lessons you've learned from this year of racing in Europe? that you're going to go oh yeah next year when I hit it full hard like yeah. this is what I, I'm going to take into it yeah I'd say um once sort of I'd probably say that using like after the time trial once you've time done your time trial and qualified you pretty much just need to forget about that everyone everyone at the top's fast so where you where you qualify doesn't really matter and if you don't qualify as good it doesn't doesn't really matter at the end of the day you're you're still in and you've just got to take each each race at a time and just go through it that way mm. yeah i guess that's a a great way of looking at things and yeah it it does show the the strength and depth that there really is like i'd i'd say actually like you could tell me anyone from the start she's won i'd yeah. go yeah i believe you like yeah 
uh, <laughs> there's not many races you can feel that way about like yeah you know just because i've got more of a road background but i guess even in xco you know there's probably 10 names you could pick in an xco race that you'd go yeah, yeah. that they're, they're a likely winner but xce it's so open yeah um so yeah worlds what are your like have you watched Ireland before because to me i I feel like Ireland's the kind of mario kart xe course if that makes sense yeah yeah. (laughs) more than any other course this is like cycling meets mario kart really yeah yeah yeah. sort of anything can happen at any any stage (laughs) just got to be ready to ready to go if whatever happens once you get out there so yeah yeah, awesome. Uh, do you have any particular hopes for it? Are you obviously everyone would love a win? Is is the win the ultimate target, or are you um, kind of going, oh, you know, get round, yeah. see what happens? It's it's very hard being being my first year. I like as you said, everyone. I think everyone's going out there to win, and I am definitely going to do that. But yeah, being my first year, I'm really just just going to go out there, have fun, sort of give it my best race race for the win and yeah just whatever happens is going to happen and if it if it turns out as a win I'll be unbelievably stoked with that um but if it isn't I'll it's a it's a good good way to end my Europe trip um with whatever result happens yeah definitely imagine having a rainbow jersey to take home with you like yeah yeah um that because... was the case. I don't think I'll take it off all, all the way home <laughs> <laughs> you just be wearing it through through duty yeah. free and everything yeah, yeah. um but yeah i mean you were picked by one of the commentators i can't remember which one unfortunately um but one of the two who do the commentary for uci have picked you as you the sort of wild card winner um yeah. is that how could you see that happening for yourself or is there someone that you think oh yeah they're, they're they've got a, an amazingly strong chance of winning here well, like we touched on before, I don't think like anyone's a certain winner with with XCE. Mm. Sort of like on the road and um in the XCO sort of stuff, you have you have the guys that are really strong and uh, likely to win. But with XCE, just anything could happen. Like the bike could go wrong, you could crash. There's just so so many chances for things to go wrong. So I think it's it's so wide open that it's hard to put a finger on any one name. Um, so yeah. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here because obviously yep. XCE is known to be a bit like very friendly in terms yep. of like there's a lot of camaraderie. So, is there anyone that you'd like to see win? Not necessarily that you think you will win, but if you go, yeah. oh yeah, like I'm really pleased for that person to get the win here. Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd probably have to go with Edwin Lynn. He's um. He's been so okay. strong all year. I think he's qualified, like, he's won the qualifying um, almost every race every race this year, and he's been strong all year. So I'd say if he wins, that would be that'd be awesome. Um, he'd probably be the one for me. Oh, nice. Um, so what are the plans when you, you get back to New Zealand? Um, yeah, what's the, the rest of your year looking like? Um, uh, when I, when I get back, I'll probably have a couple of weeks off just to just sort of reset. And then, um, obviously be back into sort of marathon eliminator prep for, for that Walker 100 weekend, which comes up in the end of October. Um, oh, okay. and then after that we'll sort of be switch, switch <laughs> more, more to the road, um, sort of over, over summer this year, I'm planning on doing probably more so road than any mountain biking, just just to change it up, pretty keen to do some racing on the road and get to um, some of our UCI races that we've got in New Zealand, like Cycle Classic or Southland. Mm. Nice. And yeah, how can people like keep up with you on social media? Like, how can they find out what what you're doing? And you know, just follow this New Zealander with a you know living this crazy life in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I could probably probably my Instagram is the best way. I try to try to keep keep everyone updated on there see what i'm up to and um yeah things like that 
Oh, nice. Well, I'll, I'll put that in the show notes. I always say I will. Um, this time I mean it. Um, <laughs> but also it, it will actually be up on screen right about now as well. Um, just Sweet. so people can see it um, and know where to, to look for you. Um, all that's left for me to say is good luck for the weekend. Um, and yeah, I hope everything goes well going on from that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, keen to get into it and see, see, how, see what happens. Well, there you go. That was Lockie Brown. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did recording. Um, as always, if you could drop us a like and subscribe and all those good things that people say on YouTube videos, it would be hugely appreciated. If not, no bother because I'm just glad you've listened to all of this and got this far.